So they were painted together so they're yep. uniform, they're right. taken off. And then that came in right up here on the right hand side. Then they'll stuff the engine in at the end of this line. Uh, actually right, right here. Uh, I spent the last three and a half years of my life on the engineering of this, so uh comes with a drip tray. Incredible. And this is a finished product. This is VIN number one of the 2020 Shelby GT 500s, finished in Hornet Green, a unique color that we cannot get. This is a special color painted only on this GT 500. If you're wondering how this color got on this car, well, this specific car is owned by Mr. Craig Jackson. He paid $1.1 million for this car at the Scottsdale auction last year. All that money was a charity, so for a really good cause and for paying $1.1 million, he was able to ask Ford for any color he wanted on this new GT500. So with that in mind, he decided to match his classic 60s Green Hornet GT500 prototype. What's your opinion of this green? I like the flakes in it. It's kind of like Grabber Lime, right? But it's way darker and it's got metallic flakes baked into it. I wish they had this color available for us to order. I'm liking it. I'm honestly liking it. It just comes together so well, especially with those side stripes. This is one of those cars where you don't even need over the top stripes to make it still look good because without the over the top stripes, the car just, it still comes together and looks mean. Even with my car, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Originally, I was telling myself, hey, you can't get a Shelby without stripes. Ended up doing it and I'm really happy I did. The black on black, it looks awesome. And comparing black on black to this, I feel like the black color, it really hides some of the lines of the vehicle. So looking at Craig Jackson's car, you can see like the fangs on the front end. You can see many more of the body lines and also the accents between the green, the green apple color and the black accents. It makes for a good contrast. Oh, this is cool. Check this out. Here's a shot of his classic 60 GT500 and his new 2020 GT500 carbon fiber track package side by side. And you'll notice that the side stripes, 
they say the same exact thing, EXP 500. That is certainly something you'll never see on any other GT500 out there. Here's the press release right here. Bear Jackson Chairman and CEO Craig Jackson purchased a vehicle last year during the Scottsdale auction and was on site at FRAP, which is Flat Rock Assembly Plant, before the holidays as the vehicle made its way down the assembly line. Jackson's winning bid of $1.1 million raises important funds for the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. And this is what he said. As a Mustang enthusiast, it's an honor to be the current caretaker of such a historically important car. This newest GT500 is trailblazing blazing for its innovation. Oh, now this is very interesting. It says, as part of his winning bid, Jackson was afforded the opportunity to choose any color for the exterior of the vehicle. For inspiration, he looked to his collection and found and decided to match the candy apple green paint on his 1968 GT500 prototype known as Green Hornet. The legendary Green Hornet enjoys the distinction of being one of the few surviving factory prototypes and is often recognized by Mustang enthusiasts worldwide for its innovative design, performance, and handling modifications. Carol Shell Shelby helped test and develop components for the project car. The press release continues and says Jackson's new 2020 GT500 will be on display alongside Green Hornet as well as two other vehicles from Jackson's collection. His recently refurbished 1967 Shelby GT500 known as Little Red will pair with his second GT500. He's getting two of them, that's so cool, that's coated in rapid red metallic. So I, I get it now. If you didn't want to see these cars make their official public debut, then just go to the Barrett Jackson auction in Scottsdale next week, which you'll see all four of these Shelbys on display. My question to all of you is this. What do you think of the assembly line, the production line, of where they build the new GT500s? These cars do cost eighty dollars to $100,000, and what is your opinion of where they're built? And also, what do you think of VIN number one of the GT500s? The green apple paint job, the green hornet. I have to say this, watching this video makes me just so excited for my carbon fiber track package GT500 to get built. As you guys know, we're getting blue with white painted over the top stripes. It's actually in Ford Performance Blue, so it should look very cool. I think it's going to be the flip-flop opposite of our GT350R, which is white and blue. It's going to be so cool because to me, the blue and white, it just screams Mustang heritage, Mustang Shelby heritage. And the thought of that car going down the production line and getting the carbon fiber wheels and the carbon fiber GT4 rear wing, it's just so cool to me. What's also awesome is that so many of you are getting this car. So this video kind of gives you a good insight at how these cars get built. I find it very interesting how the assembly line is filled with workers and robots and basically they aid each other. So as you saw there, they were lifting the seats, the car of seats, and the robots were helping them line that up and get inside the car. It's kind of cool because all the robots and the people work together to build these vehicles. This is it. This is where the magic happens. This is where the GT500s get built. There are multiple stages, so you have the body shop, trim line, the mod shop, and throughout different stages your car gets painted, it gets put together with all the panels, the engine, your interior getting finished, you have quality control. Also, if you're getting painted over the top stripes, Ford ships your car to Penske, which that could take some time because they got to trailer it and get over there. They do the over the top painted stripes there and they trailer it back to Ford. Also in the mod shop, you're going to get your carbon fiber wheels and your carbon fiber GT4 rear wing. Keep this in mind though, not everything is done at FRAP, at the Flat Rock Assembly Plant. For example, the front splitter and the side splitter wickers, those are installed at your dealership. This is where my GT500 came from. My car was built back in November, I think November 20th was when it was finished sometime around then, and then it was shipped. Make sure to stay tuned for much more GT500 content like this because, as you know, again, our carbon fiber track pack is going to get built very soon. And maybe we may go out to do something like this. It all depends on the game plan. And I think by then, we should have the C8 Corvette. So we'll have the C8 Corvette and then the new GT500 side by side. That should make for a pretty good comparison, right? The carbon track pack versus the mid-engine, the craziest Corvette ever. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button. It really helps me out. And subscribe for much more great Shelby videos coming your way. Don't forget to leave me a comment in the comment section down below. I really do want to hear you guys think. Thanks again, and I'll see all of you in the next episode.